Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and how to use multitasking in the Arduino integrated development environment. And whatever you do in the Arduino IDE, you know that there's two basic functions that you have to write for all your Arduino code. And this is the setup function and also the loop function. And wouldn't it be nice to have more than one loop function and they run totally independent from each other. So we have loop one, loop two, loop three and so on. And luckily the Arduino ESP32 libraries are based on the free real-time operation system or free RTOS and we can use this functionality to run more than one task. So we set up our setup routine and start from there more than one loop task. So we start with the function create task, the loop one, the loop two and the loop three and more if we want. So let's have a look at some small example code. We have our setup routine and we start by initializing the serial interface, but this is only for debug output. Then we create our first task with the loop one, loop two and loop three. And for this simple example, I just use one functionality. So I only have one task, but they are run totally independent from each other. And if we look into our our loop functionality there's nothing here just a delay so this loop don't run in a extra task and use up all our CPU speed so if we write a empty loop that runs forever and it ticks as fast as possible but it do nothing so to avoid this function we just put here some delay and this is the maximum delay we can use and if we now just have a look in our task. So first we can have a look at the parameters. We get the parameters one, two, three here for simplicity and we can put these parameters into a variable. This is just the task number and we can print out this task number if we want. So the next thing I do here is just for an example I create a variable sleep time and the sleep time get a random number and then we put out our task number and the sleep time and then we wait for the sleep time randomly so every task do something in a different timing and then the loop is run forever so let's compile this and have a look at the output so after compiling this program we flash this program to our ESP32 and after this we start the serial monitor so we start the serial monitor tour and let's see the output. So we have task one, two, three, and we have different wait times. So this time we see the task one is put out twice because we have very small delay. As you see our task running, running very independently. So this is not so interesting. So I've prepared a more advanced example and we can have a look in this code. And this time I use the functionality to set up six NeoPixel strings and I want to run this NeoPixel strings totally independent from each other. So we set up our library and this time I use the library from Niall Coben and you find the library here with its link. So have a look to his library. And I use this inside the Arduino IDE because I want to run eight totally independent remote control register and this library is very nice nicely written so it's no problem to use this and I use this without any changes just the raw library put here into my sketch folder so this is just a small intro and let's have a look into our setup routine and like the last time we initialized our serial interface then I do a setup for our pixel strings so they are all cleared in this first startup and then 
I create a task and the loop is just same like our small example. We just delay the maximum time. So let's have a look into my task. And this is also very small. We get our task number in this variable. And this is looped six times. So I have six strings. And then I just set some pixel here. And this is um, just a rainbow color. And we just set one pixel to the rainbow color and all the other pixels are off. Then we show the whole string and then we just do a random delay and that's it. And this is the setup for my breadboard configuration. I take the ground pin and tie them all together in a bus configuration. So I connect them to one, two, three, four, five, six LED strings and also the 5 volt rail from the USB connector I take and do the bus configuration to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 strings of the LEDs and then I tie the GPIO pin 23 to one string, the GPIO pin 22 to one string and the GPIO pins 21, 19, 18 and 5 goes also to one of the strings and that's it. And today you can also win another analoglamp.com ESP32 development board or module giveaway. Just read the terms and conditions in the video or inside the description. And I'm using this kind of LED strip. We have eight WS2812 LEDs on a strip. And on the back side, we have all the connections, the ground pin, the five volt rail and the data in. And on the other side, we have a data out pin. So we can connect them all together in a daisy chain type of connection. And my first try is to solder some wires around the corners and connect them with some kind of solder bridge. But this is not very successful. So I think about another method and I came up with this type of arrangement. I'm using the standard pin headers and solder the pin headers to all the connections. And luckily they all fit in the same position. So this is maybe I'm using in my goal the angled type. But for this demonstration, I'm lucky with this kind of setup. And here we see the practical demo. They are all LEDs start at the same position and then they run independently from each other in a very random pattern. And if you think a little bit bigger, maybe you have a 8 by 8 by 8 LED 3D cube and you want to split some rails so you can have up to eight totally independent tasks that steers your LED cube and that makes everything a little bit simpler. Or if we want to have some synchronizing of the tasks. So luckily we have the free RTOS environment and we can also synchronize our tasks and they wait till every task is at the same point. And here's a little idea I came up with with my fake LED cube and I draw a small SketchUp demo so I can have a look what's the result is looking. But if we turn around the cube, we see that this is only a fake cube and we can only have a look at three sides and the whole cube is in the inside. There's no LEDs and I don't want to try a real LED cube because I think it's okay if only three sides, the side that you are watching on is illuminated. 
And as always, thanks for watching today. I hope you find this interesting and hopefully you learn something today. And if so, you can support my work. Give me just a thumbs up and maybe write some comments. And also, as always, you find the small source code of the demo in the description and the link to my GitHub page. I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.